Hello, this is Cuckoo and this is Václav Pelušek, one of the founders and the main inventor at the synthesizer community Bastel Instruments. I had the opportunity to hang out with Bastel for about a week in their hometown Brno in Czech Republic. So please stay with me and get to know some of the people that is making Bastel Instruments to what it is today. So this is a box full of prototypes. So this is the Standuino Frau Angelico. Funny drum machine. Prototype reusing part of the micro granny circuit board. <laughs> there is one. That's the CV Trinity. Some early castle prototype. So I built this for my master thesis. So it was for input from different types of analog sensors. Because that's the first Eurorack filter I've built. And yeah, that's funny. That's like a quite advanced prototype of something that never made it. You could interact with like this, or you could blow into it, and then it would output some <laughs> random signals as the spoons touch. <laughs> Do most of these work? I guess they would work, yeah. I sort of started to put them in one box just, you know, a few months back because they have been everywhere. <laughs> so I think this is the first my micro granny version 2 prototype. The micro granny has been yeah. successful. Yeah, it was our first very, like, really successful instrument. We announced it at Music Messe. When we announced it, we were three people, and since then we started really growing. And it it was the thing that really helped us to to learn more and get much better in what we do. Like we are a really good combination, in a sense, because he is an inventor and like this creator, so to say, and this somehow mechanic so like he takes like ideas and he brings that to like the very end the other part of the of all the project of, of bustle there is like a lot of movement and stuff and i think that what is important to keep Václav secure like kind of out of this to keep focused yeah. so i am now i'm taking care of this I'm the best in this stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, but I like that. The other day, we went to an exhibition that you and your wife uh, yeah. had made. Uh, is that like something you can't let go, or is it just part of this, this same world in a way? And we started this project as an art project. Like in the beginning, it was Tanduino. Yeah. And it was for us, like for quite a long time, maybe a couple of years, obviously the art project. Maybe it was because we were both from the art school, right? And then you can see everything like an art project, you know? <laughs> like, uh, uh, but... And it turned into the company somehow, I don't know, unconsciously, like somehow it just happened. Somebody told us you have a company. Yeah. PayPal told us. PayPal? Thanks, dudes from PayPal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are you now in Basel? That's the nice part of it. Like, Bustle is rather community than a, than a company. Yeah. And how to easily explain this difference is... I don't know. I don't know how many of us. I don't know what's turnover. I don't know how many units we sell every month. I should know it, maybe, <laughs> but I don't know it. No. Honestly. Several times when I met you, you've been talking about Bustle and the growing community. Mm. And when I speak to people, working with you they also mentioned it yeah we you know we approached Bustle and uh, they found work for us and accepted us in a way we don't care as i said like we don't care or i don't care about the numbers but i care about the people yeah and that's the difference in between company and community because i believe that when we have like people like who who will share the same passion and say the same love for the for what we do for all the stuff. It's not only like making instruments, it's like all the things around. So, and when we have like all the same motivation, we can really create these dynamics, like moving stuff. How, was it like a moment where, where you came to this point where it, you could see yourself expanding or how did it all happen? You 
in the beginning we just thought we wanted to make instruments for ourselves and then when other people asked to get them too you are okay let's try to do this and the more people ask us the more people we had to ask or basically ask our friends or wives to help us with making it and that's sort of how how everybody came in you know because and also as as Andre said a lot of the people just knew about us and asked us if if we need some help with anything and we said like yeah we actually could use you and then once once you're not two people but three four five it starts to become like spend time together you're becoming friends you share common interests so it becomes a community and now now as a community we really focus on music so that that was the main topic of the last half a year we organize these events every month where we perform and learn how to perform and we have this uh, label so we also make music so we put out records and we also motivate people to to make records so basically they can take some time off just to make records under some circumstances and they're they're actually being paid for it <laughs> yeah that that really makes me happy <laughs> Basically, you could hear all the experiments we just did. Uh, it has some very unique, a digital flavor. Not afraid to show its digital face. I think in these times, so much analog stuff out there that sounds great, and some digital stuff that tries to sound like analog stuff. But this sounds like lush, crisp, digital, beautiful stuff. Yeah, that's why we called it a true digital tape machine. Yeah. In yeah. contrast to trying to be true analog, we yeah. just yeah do the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. You can see that the woodworker, the guy operating the what's it called, CNC. CNC yeah. yeah. He he's so happy about being here, and he's you know. He's been performing almost every day. <laughs> I've known him for quite a while. He's been performing with many different bands, so he was always a musician. And he was always working at the bar somewhere. Or that's maybe the story of a lot of people here. <laughs> his hands, his hands are really golden. He's really good with hands. When he joined the crew, he started to perform on his own. And he's constantly developing it. He's working really hard on on uh, on his music. Almost everybody here has this dream of making music or being a musician. And we just try to support that, you know. And Leos is a big motivation for everyone, I I think, because you know, he's he's made a career. He's now a professional musician. They're already cut when you get Yeah, them. it's cut it from CNC, from Taras, and then we are sending it here and doing the nice piece of it. It's glued by, like we've got this, I don't know how to call it in English. So it looks like biscuits. It. Yeah, it looks yeah. like biscuits, but it's made from wood. Yeah. And uh, in, the, in the wood you cut with this machine, yeah. like the hole, having this uh, knife here, yeah. so it makes a hole and it fits perfectly okay. in the, this biscuit together with the glue like yeah. expands yeah it expands yeah. thank yeah. you and spread it up to like yeah. destroy it yeah. you need a hammer yeah. or a foot <laughs> yeah. so that's it and also the panels for uh, modules we are doing here you see like there are the the yeah. bridges from the yeah. cnc yeah. and we have to make it like the edges mm. smooth and yeah that's Voita. yeah Voita, say hi <laughs> <laughs> 
he's the he's the painter and one is guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How come you ended up here at Basel Instrument? Yeah, well, that's a fun. Well, it's not so funny story. <laughs> it's a boring story. I was I was working at the bar and one of my friends started to doing the the main bartender. Yeah. I was like pretty bored to working there and I was also studying so it was pretty pretty tough for me and then then he told me like Bastel is looking out for uh, guys who is working with wood. Yeah. So I I ended up here like that. Did you have any experience with wood before? Yeah, basically from my my grandfather had this small room at his house on the countryside and I was spending there all my childhood there I learned how to work with the wood. Yeah. Yesterday was a, an exhibition uh-huh. at uh, Andre and his wife and you were, you were performing a little bit, right? Yeah. So that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Is it something you do sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. We will be playing tonight yeah. after you, so yeah. Yeah. we are cool. doing this sometimes. Like the setup is all, always changing and yeah, we're playing basically techno. So. Wherever we go here at Basel Instruments, mo- almost everyone is to some extent also performing music. Mm-hmm. That's like that, yeah. yeah. Like uh, sometimes we're jamming together here yeah. during, the, during the weekends, yeah. recording something. Yeah. And just now, the other woodworker, the CNC guy, he was like, "Yeah, check this out." I mean, yeah, this he's super awesome. Yeah. Like, you can you can see the progress of him like every day. Yeah, because he's patching all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when we uh, did meet Laos, who you're gonna meet today, he's like a really talented musician and like whatever synth he touches, it immediately makes great music. Yeah. He's been doing weekly workshops on Fridays for the public. Yeah. These have been pretty popular. And then also I think it's important to have this space for the young people, so you can go somewhere, ask questions. Yeah. And some some of the stuff is kind of expensive as well, so yes. for young people to be able to try out, yeah. it's yeah, really a good opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> I have to say it's terrible business model to open a synth store in Brno <laughs> because yeah. you know people just don't have the money here. Yeah, I mean the the store is more of a service to the to the local community than, than a real business plan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's bustled instruments. A service to the community. <laughs> I'm a melodic person. I'm playing melodies with keys, yeah. and I always find it very difficult to to not have the keyboard. But what you just did here, you introduced a little delay, and suddenly the melody has so much more value. It's so it's much less static than it was before. I think the challenge with modulars, as I see it, is to to come to this point where it doesn't feel static. And I think whatever you play, you always have this, you know, playful groove and it's always constantly changing and it's organic. It's like, I'm still working with the eight step uh, uh, sequencer. Yeah. But the thing is to like, uh, make it break out of this like never ending loop. Yeah, and then it's just like I I don't know certainly like what it's uh, what note is coming next yeah. or anything like that, but I know which are set and uh, it created um, like a palette of, of yes, notes. Yes, it's and like a soundscape. So thing. now if we change it, it it's, it would be like a, and suddenly we made a new part of the yeah, song. Absolutely, and we can completely change it. It's like yeah, the steps. So we can like remove some of the gates, so it's less uh, full. Yeah. Have you been part of making any of these? Uh, well, I was uh, consulting with Václav, yeah. you know, the main head, about mainly the interface, what should be the functionality, yeah, yeah. and I put most of my like ideas into the popcorn and uh, the Nitrider also when we were like figuring out the interface to make it really 
super playable because it is really designed uh, to uh, be operated with one hand because as it's so fast it, I, I have no need for uh, saving patterns you know? yeah there's yeah. extensive uh, pattern memory and everything but I just never use it because yeah. it's, it's, it's faster <laughs> to program a yeah. new pattern than a recall yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the already made one but you you perform a lot now don't you yes yes I mean did it all how did it all start it yeah I started with new music more like uh, classical way I was having guitar lessons yeah, and yeah. learning drums and upright bass mm-hmm. and, and playing in with like uh, in groups and, and, and stuff yeah. but uh, uh, then I went to uh, study like electronic music uh, composition and, and uh, this stuff yeah. in uh, uh, Hungary yeah it's like art university where I yeah, fell in love with synthesizers and uh, wanted to do that and yeah I, ca- I came I came back and I was all about like I want to start my synthesizer brand yeah. like right now I need to make modules that was uh, the time when I started to talk with uh, Václav yeah. and Andre who were just who just started the bustle instruments with uh, the small uh, pocket-sized uh, digital units that yeah, uh, yeah. wasn't uh, the thing that I was heading for, but it was ultimately interesting. Yeah. And, uh, I was keeping talking to Václav about modular. I showed him like a bunch of stuff, asked him for tips because he just had uh, way more experience that, than I had. Yeah, and uh, it all ended up uh, that uh, I joined Bustle Instruments and we started to make modules. By the time when you launched it, yeah. there was something that happened at one point just a, f- a few years ago, when it's just boom, everything is modular. <laughs> for uh, for us, uh, it was uh, completely new territory, yeah. and uh, it was uh, hugely based on uh, Václav's mm-hmm. university finishing, which was all about like taking all the you know sensors like. Um, physical or anything that you can measure, you yeah, know, like yeah. physical or chemical, natural aspects of like temperature, pressure, uh, humidity, or yeah. anything that you can measure with a sensor yeah. uh, to be able to uh, translate this into the um, signal that you are already using in your uh, mm-hmm. synthesizer, it's yeah. just voltage, right? And vice versa. just take the signals that you are used to work with and put them into the physical world yeah. somewhat through the motors, uh, solenoid, electromagnetic yeah. hammers, you know, that can like strike stuff and be your artificial super brain drummer. So, so what, what are you traveling with now? Is right now I have like a, a suitcase, yeah. three rows of modules. Yeah. It's like an environment uh, that I can uh, create yeah. one hour of uh, evolving, interesting uh, sound and be confident with myself going on the stage, yeah. having no idea what's going to happen, but yeah. I will know that it's going to be good and people are going to love it. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, uh, That's a, a very good <laughs> premise. It's was it like a point, point yeah. where where <laughs> things started to to work out for you where you Absolutely. could book yourself or somebody even tried to book you yes biggest breakthrough was not uh, coming like from outside but uh, from within when like i was making music for years and it was always like uh, my good time you know yeah, like yeah, uh, like yeah. making it yeah this is fun this is how i relax this yeah. is how i like enjoy myself mm-hmm. and stuff and there was uh, a point uh, when i was like i don't want to do this just like uh, spare time activity yeah. i want yeah. to just uh, do it for life i want to like invest everything i have all my time all my energy into mm-hmm. doing this because that's the most exciting thing in the world for me so uh, when I decided this, uh, everything got different because like you change your attitude, you change yeah. your way, how, how you what approach you f- things. Yeah. And uh, when you, uh, I found out that when I made this flip in my head, everybody else started to approach me differently. Yeah. So suddenly I was uh, getting like attention and uh, and uh, offers and possibilities to uh, perform yeah. or uh, release music or anything like this. Uh, and it wasn't coming from out, but I just like changed my perception mm. and suddenly it started to happen. That's great. So that was weird and, and, and cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, this is things that anybody can be told 
this a million times, but until you actually flip that switch, um, it it's just a hy hypothetic, you know. It's just like you you meet somebody new and like uh, uh, suddenly like somebody asks you what you do, what's yeah. your uh, and you introduce yourself. I'm a musician. Yeah. You know, I'm not a guy who uh, does something and a uh, music. I'm full on musician. That's yeah. my thing and like I see myself like this yeah. and others do too yeah. I don't know it cool. was like the, the biggest thing of course like there were events that like something went well or like I had important performance yeah, or, yeah. or I released a successful record or something that like gives you a push but real breakthrough for me was this moment when this flipped <laughs> So what's up, Kuku? I'm right here in Brno, and uh, I played a show yesterday that you guys arranged. <laughs> that was really cool. You played Bustle Jam. Yeah, yeah, Bustle Jam. Nobody knows that these days, but like one day, I think, it will be nice format, like international, like doing these jams. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we are starting something like that on the international level yeah. with guys from... It's like 15 different cities at the moment, yeah. including, I don't know, like these fancy cities. Yeah. Basically, they are only fancy cities yeah. like Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, Toronto, New York, LA and Brno, yeah. of course. Of course. Of I course. mean, Brno is in the top. Of this <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it starts yeah. from B, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Bustle. Maybe uh, Amsterdam is before that. Oh, we no. should change the name of Amsterdam. Yeah. Why don't you just don't <laughs> Like Bremsterdam or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Hamsterdam. Hamsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should, yeah. I think that we should call that. Yeah. To the Dutch government. Yeah. Hey, dudes, did you consider to change the name? <laughs> I thing that strikes me every time I speak with you is that you got obviously such a, a huge sense of humor in everything you do. <laughs> like, uh, I think that being funny, it's super hard to find in the fine art and even like music context in yeah. general. Yeah. And since ever, I really hated this. Uh, uh, like staged situations where you, like you just get got on the stage and then you need to be like super serious yeah. you have like black clothes most probably and you play like and you look uh, like you need poop or something like that you know what I mean like this like not only serious but like this pooping face yeah. like. and I really miss humor in yeah. art and yeah. everywhere. That's why I am so enjoying like your performance, for instance. And like to be honest, I really fight with it as well, because it's all around, right? And like being performing, it's like it's so close. I'm trying to smile because I'm enjoying that. I'm I'm having fun, but like sometimes like keeping focused, it's also turning me into like be a bit serious. Yeah. Like on outside, not like inside. Inside, I'm laughing most of the time. But <laughs> Do you think you put a, a part of this into your, uh, the, the synthesizers and stuff you're making here? Basically, most of these internal designs of synthesizers are like really dependent on Václav's uh, way of thinking and also his sense of humor. And I believe that. Like we fit like together uh, because we are bringing like different stuff. And I wouldn't say that Václav is not like this funny dude, you know. I would say, <laughs> yeah, he might be like more funny than you would expect. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Even it's not sometimes so obvious. 
and I'm sure that we have like a lot of like humor in a, in instruments. And it's not only like samples we use in microgranny or we used to use, like like super funny, crazy, weird samples, but it's also in like construction of some modules. Yeah. Just like doing like weird stuff with the T kick. Yeah. It's just fun. Yeah. You know? It's full of jokes. Yeah. Basically. Have you and the names of the And the name of course. Like names, yeah. Names are so obvious. Yeah. But you like some, sometimes when it's something like too obvious, you tend to forget that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a bit about how you met uh, Peter Edwards and and uh, what he brings to the Bastel community and to the company. So we've met Peter in Netherlands, uh, in the studio of Rob Hordijk, amazing uh, synthesizer maker from Netherlands. He's like the Stradivari of modular synth. And Peter was in Netherlands studying and also partly because of Rob Hordijk and we've met in his studio and we figured out, oh, this is the guy that makes these beautiful synths. And at that time there have been very few few people in the DIY synth community really looking at the aesthetics of those synths. So there was just a few people and he was one of them and we just met him. It took a while to realize who he was. And then that was in Den Haag and then we went to Amsterdam where he studied. So we hanged out for about a week in Amsterdam and constantly brainstorming about, you know, ideas and sort of immediately we knew we there's a lot of matching ideas in our heads and then basically he came for a visit uh, two years ago in summer and then at Christmas he moved in <laughs> because we've just had this urge to work together it's so amazing to have somebody to talk to about the nerdy stuff about like the finest details of making synthesizers because he's been doing it for many many years and he's kind of a legendary guy like when a lot of people including me have been learning things about how to do this like his website was full of instructions it's really awesome to have him here really because He's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm in a studio next to Václav's studio, and one of the guys in the Pastel Instruments Network is Peter Edwards. Hello. Hi. <laughs> now, how come you ended up here? Uh, or ended up? Um, well, this is, yeah, it's the next leg of the journey. Um, I met Andre and Václav a couple of years ago, and uh, when I was studying in Holland, and they just had an awesome like attitude and energy and I wanted to be part of it so yeah and yeah so we're just bringing our sort of weird ideas together and creative energy and yeah making stuff happen it's, I mean I'm, I'm part of the Basel team but we have sort of like a, a slightly different operation going and it all overlaps though and that's the thing that's exciting about Basel is that there's so many different projects but they all overlap you know so it creates this collective momentum um, and that's really what this whole scene is it's not just one thing here or there it's the people involved and the projects yeah. and the connections with you know we're working with some people in New York and in different places and um, my background sort of started in circuit bending so I've been doing that for or I was doing that for like 10 years and then the scene sort of evolved and disappeared and changed and grew into something else uh, and I started doing a lot more modular stuff but the background is really a lot more about experimenting with what the object itself has to offer, what sort of unintended character can you pull out of it by creating this, I don't know, complex, weird system. Yeah. Um, and I'm taking a lot of the approach of circuit bending and applying it to analog electronics, which is like a huge step up, I think. It's, you know, this is the thing I want to share with people the most, is the excitement I feel from playing music and from making 
sounds that I've never heard before and making my own sounds that feel like they're mine. So, you know, I want to make products that share that experience with people. Yeah. You know? um, and working with Boston gives me the chance to do that. Or at least it really moves things a lot quicker than I could on my own. Yeah. Sure. What's really super important with this kind of process is you need to be able to make mistakes. And that's something that was really hard to do when you're working on your own. But when you're with a group of people like this and you have momentum and you have other things being produced, you can make big mistakes. And I've made big, expensive mistakes, you know, or like something that you think is going to be cool and it's not. But you need to have the freedom and the flexibility to do that so you can come to these exciting, not always safe conclusions, which is where a lot of the exciting stuff comes from. And that's a spirit they have for sure. The other day, uh, there was this uh, Bastille Jam uh, downtown and uh, you have this really high pumping powerful set going i think there's there's like a nice overlap of different processes that also exist here and in most places i've worked but you know like i think it's really nice to be inventing and be in the studio and engineering and i'm getting deep into you know electrical engineering brain and then you can play but then you can also go on stage and have this really intense social experience and to keep those connected, I feel, is really important because it informs why you would want to make these instruments at all. Uh, so the way that it evolved is like I, I started with like this light. So I have this orb here that it's just like straight hypnotic. You know, it's just a glowing ball, and people can't help but feel pulled to it. So that sort of is like an initial thing that pulls them in, and then from there, it's just like exploring really. I don't know, effective tones, effective timbre that sort of you can feel in your body. People are like, oh, do you, you know, you only use analog, like, do you use a cell phone? It's like, of course yeah. I use a cell phone, like, <laughs> it's super useful. Not in my set necessarily, but, you know, in my life. The mixer is doing, well, like, three or four things. You know, one is just the EQs. So I do a lot with, especially for the drums, to distinguish between them and, like, highlight the behavior of one and then like take out one of the others. So that's just regular EQ stuff. Uh, then I'm also doing feedback. It just takes signal, feeds it back into a channel, which is then feeding back into itself so you can get tones. So now it's making a tone of its own. So there's a tone it makes on its own. You can change the pitch with the EQ. But then when you feed another sound into it, And that's just, yeah, that's just sort of like without this, it just sounds like that. Yeah. Which like, you know, it's nice-ish, but really boring. But then all you do is just feed it back and now it's like it's thick, crunchy, it feels like there's something physical happening. You know, it's something you can really grab onto. Um, like I want it to be like uh, something you like pull out of the ground, like a big root or something, you know, like it's covered with dirt. You know, like, um, but I also don't want to like hurt people. It's not about being aggressive. It's not about being angry. You know, it's about feeling something good. Yeah. I would call it mean um. in a way, but when I, I was there, <laughs> it wasn't mean. It's just like you know, you're balancing this uh, fine line between really, really beefy and cool, but at the same time, super playful. If you're doing it with a really positive spirit, and like I put myself in front of the speakers because it's kind of saying to people, like, if I'm going to subject you to it, I'm going to subject myself to it too. Because that's something that kind of bugs me is like really aggressive musicians who are behind the speakers. And it's like you're hurting everybody, but you're like, yeah. you're not part of our pain, you know? <laughs> What's really nice about working with these guys and having this freedom is that I can allow ideas to sort of naturally bo like bubble to the surface. And this project is sort of bringing together a ton of different ideas. And part of that was, yeah, this idea that like it can create these sort of organic sounds. Um, so let's see if we can get. Um, it wasn't necessarily my idea to make a water drop synth, but something that has this very organic sound, but then can like transition into this very like rich electronic sound as well. Um, it's all about feedback and complex modulation. Um, and it makes these really wet organic sounds and I really like the slider interface um, 
because it plays with uh, your logic brain, which is like, this is the pitch, you know, I understand pitch, that's a filter, this is modulation. But it also plays with your visual brain, where like, this can be one preset, well, like, that could be another, or you can make a smile or something. But you know, you, you start to engage with your instrument in a different way. And I find this handle really funny, because like, nobody's really gonna like, walk around with it, but it brings this idea to you, like, of course, like, you can take this camping, you can take it on a walk. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you want to take a synthesizer to the woods, you know? So I think like a big part of what I'm excited about, Vatsov is excited about, is expanding the demographic, um, trying to communicate with a wider audience. Um, and this is sort of one of my attempts to approach a more universal language. But we couldn't, I couldn't just make this like, intuitive weirdo thing it also is like a super extensive patch bay um so it's like everything has cv in and outs yeah. you can modulate to everything with anything productivity is appealing to people you know that they're going to see this device they don't quite get it but they know it comes from a place of people who are actually genuinely really committed to making something great um, and that's a lot of the response i see from people who support Bostel is they don't know what it is necessarily but they're in it you know they're they're in they're up for it because they trust us, yeah. you know, um, and that's just a great place to be. I really want to get people building circuits. Yeah. It's just super fun. It's really hard. It's super confusing, um, but it's incredibly rewarding. Um, it gives you this control that you don't get when you buy products. You know, it, I feel like it's never really mine if I use something that's completely just store bought. All the products at Bastel are prepared for assembly and put into bags on this shelf at the main office. Each bag contains all the components needed to assemble several units of a particular model. Bastel is crowdsourcing most of the assembling with the local community. Engineering students, retired electricians, workers that need a little extra income come by and pick up a bag and solder it together. They can use the office or do it from home. The assembled units are put here, waiting for quality testing and the final panels to be mounted. Yeah, so, so you mostly work on laser cutting, right? Uh, I work with, the, for example, all the plastics. Yeah. When you get the micro granny, CV Trinity, Castle, and these things. So I'm doing the cases from the plastic, all, all of these products, what we do. Yeah. So you need to quality control the, yeah, yeah. Um, the design and mm -hmm. make sure that it works with yeah. the printer? Yeah. It's the sides of the castle. What is the okay. interesting on this design is the pattern who is on the sides. It's uh, random. Every piece of the side is original. Cool. Yeah. I do uh, wood, wood things for bitranger and uh, expanders to the bitrangers. I can cut uh, just three or four millimeters of the wood. Yeah. So this machine is just for the plastic knot. And for example, if I want to do some micro granny, I just uh, choose version and we use the illustrator. It's basically just vector files. Yeah, vector files. Yes. Yeah, the red one is uh, cutting yeah. and uh, the black one is a uh, gravering. We got same size of the plastic minimal garbage. Václav told me that uh, you need an, a new cutter yeah. because uh, it's always working. Yes. <laughs> Four months ago the one is was enough, got just micro granny and CV Trinity. Yeah. But now it's a castle and the new product the click. Yeah. And we need a second laser. But all all the products that are coming uh, from Bastel Instruments they're created right here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. cut here, the wood yeah. is cut here, the laser from, is cut From this, from this yeah. uh, place, yeah. Using a special kind of engraved method to, like on the cast, the bustle cast. Yeah, with the print. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So now I use the eternal power. Yeah. So I just split it on the desk after the laser and spread all the yeah, all like a color. screen print. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you sandpaper it. Yeah, yeah. Just, what's your background? How did you end up here at Bastel? Yeah, you know, I, I lived in England uh, two years ago and uh, 
you know, you do some some not most funny and interesting working here. Uh, when I came back to the Czech Republic, I wanted to try the the something with the what makes you happy and yeah, this thing. Yeah. So I came to ask Andre, I would like to work and I want to uh, do, I want to know something from, from the modular uh, guys from for the modular yeah. community and these things. And they give me the opportunity to work here. So it's great. It was, I, I don't know, half a year ago. Yeah. So, yeah. That's cool. I mean, I had a chat with Andre yesterday and he <laughs> said, like, because you, you and the, the, the wood guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. because you started working here, they cut the prototyping, you know, down from two months to mm -hmm. maybe a day or <laughs> a yeah, couple yeah, of yeah. days to make a prototype. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's such it's so valuable to have guys that, like you in yeah, the company, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. After the first music messa, we saw the modulars there, and we were like, oh. And then we, I, I got my first module, and you know, the next music messa we had the full modular <laughs> setup, basically. So it was like we saw something that we really, really wanted, but we couldn't really afford to buy it because you know the wages, the living costs, everything here is fairly low and the price of modules is pretty high and so okay I started to build a module setup for myself but then like all the other guys were like hey um, you know don't just keep it for yourself or tell me how you did that and I was like okay then you know I'll, I'll make some PCBs for you and <laughs> so you can have it too and that's basically how we figured out that we want to make it as products. When I'm seeing people who get really good with modulars, um, it's a totally different way of making music. I think there is a poten potentially a, a whole new set of musicians that don't know how to play a keyboard, maybe they don't know how to play drums, but they're very musical and they have this urge to find their instrument the modular it doesn't have a sound of, of its own i think it's really it but it asks you all the time this question like how do you want to make music and it's a very demanding question for a musician to be asked because traditionally you had your instrument and you were getting really good at it but this instrument is not predefined it always asks you how do you want to make your music and then some people make very you know, live organic patches and some people just use it as a drum machine with very like defined sound. Some people use it to make the whole thing and some people just use it to make noise. And it's really interesting to see uh, people like developing their live systems and everybody's looking, you know, at each other's work here. So maybe because you know, uh, here in Brno we have a modular meet every day. <laughs> Hello, this is Cuckoo. Hello, this is Cuckoo. <laughs> Hi, this is Cuckoo. <laughs> Hi, this is Cuckoo. <laughs> Usually I start my videos like this. Hello, this is Cuckoo today. <laughs> no, I'm just doing a presentation. Every week, Bastel is hosting a presentation or inviting a guest lecturer to the community. Today, I was honored to speak about my career as a freelance artist and also about my background as an animator. These weekly presentations are for inspiration and could be related to music, art, engineering or anything really. Perhaps even about coffee. There's a guy here at Bastel that makes coffee. And so Bastel is making Synthesizers and coffee, and, coffee as well. uh, and a coffee shop in the making. Right? Yeah, we are actually yeah. going to open a tiny coffee shop in the city center. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Like we are like such a big crew that we drink so much coffee. <laughs> yeah. that we just decided, and it was not only like decision, like based on tasting coffee, but also on uh, economics, right? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you drink so much coffee, yeah. uh, then it comes to the point that it's cheaper. To and make really, to make good, coffee really good coffee yourself. Yeah. And I believe that very soon all our customers will 
have opportunity to try it. Yeah, yeah. You should yeah. put it up on the web store as well. Yeah, we are uh, right now like uh, Animate. Uh, yeah. Our graphic dudes are finishing all the packaging. Yeah. Very good. So it will be out quite soon. Right? Yeah. We also need to try like coffee from all the suppliers around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to be sure that our quality is the. Yeah. <laughs> Tutto bene. <laughs> this is Valentino and he's working with Bustle Instruments. Uh, I started to screw and assembling modules mm -hmm. and uh, with some uh, basic repairments. Did you have any prior experience in assembling? Before not, no. no. I learned everything here. Yeah. Bustle. What happened when you, you found this passion for coffee? Was this something you had thought about for a long time? Yeah, I was a barista for some years and then I left to Amsterdam when I felt in love with this uh, fresh point of view on, on coffee. And, yeah. We are going to open a small shop here in the city, it will be in two weeks. Yeah. And then we will sell uh, fresh bean coffees from different grocers from Europe. And also coffee and music is really... Uh, there is a dialogue. Are you going to prepare the coffee shop? with a little stage or something, so yeah, you can invite musicians. Yeah, there will be a small modular. Yeah. It will be much more for us. Not musicians, but anyone. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Nice. A coffee shop with a modular. Very good thing. <laughs> Many of, of the shops here, you can see some special kind of furniture that I've never seen before, but I always see it every time in Boston. They're doing stuff on trade fairs and stuff. Basically, it's modular furniture that will bear this mark here, so you can connect them without any screws or anything, right? It's uh, also, it can be all made by hand, you know, you don't need any tools. Yeah. We, we've made, like, the first trade show we did in, in Frankfurt, Musik Messe. Yeah, yeah. Romain. And we had one of the first prototypes and we had, like, no plan for the booth or anything. We just did cut a lot of pieces before we went there and then just we played with it there and it was so much fun. We've been building up the booth. We didn't really have to plan it, but we spent way too much time just playing with it and thinking how we, sh we can do like the shells and stuff. And we've been a little bit late with connecting the synths. <laughs> For trade shows it's awesome because you don't have to plan much. We we'll just build it on the spot, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't break really. So yeah, I, I never broke anything. Actually, yeah. Yet. Yeah. But it's becoming a, too much of an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like <laughs> it's amazing. It's the only thing you need in a home. <laughs> yeah, but that's if, if you ever need something in your home, just buy this. What's it called again? Rosta. 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 Rosta furniture. It's anything you need, and also you're supporting yes. the Czech Republic Corona. <laughs> uh, this is Bastel Instruments warehouse. They finally uh, reaching the point where they can actually have a little stop. Uh, before that, they've been struggling to meet orders. So now there is actually a small stock. So all the international orders taken here and shipped to customers by guys like this guy. And this dog is taking orders. And, uh, yeah. I think that some projects we do are like really future oriented, like investing into the local community, for instance, to the musicians, like doing workshops, doing this stuff. We believe that in 20 years it, it can turn into something like music slightly, would be slightly different than yeah. if we wouldn't be here. But like how you can recognize this stuff, like this impact, there's no chance. Yeah. Like with Nicole, like to bring like more like gender equality in the electronic music. So we are trying to support like ladies around and... I mean the, the videos you've been making with Nicole, uh, with the baby <coughs> on the back and you know, doing super advanced, highly sophisticated yeah. modular, she's clearly awesome. Yes. And just by posting videos like that, I'm, I'm sure that ladies out there curious about this stuff, if they just see this lady doing this stuff really cool, it would be so much easier for them to, to enter into this world. I think it's really important to do this kind of stuff, like Synth Library in Portland, right? Like yeah. doing these workshops for the ladies. And like ladies are doing the workshops, so there is no, not this like difference, like going to the shop full, full of the like weird dudes uh, tweaking knobs and 
asking some details, some details about functionality or something like that. For the lady, it's weird, right? Yeah. I also don't feel really like, yeah, this is the right place. It's <laughs> always somehow, <laughs> yeah. Uh, before uh, Nicole got her son, uh, she was working in a shop, so we had like ladies Wednesdays. Okay. And I think this was great, and I believe this will be back soon. The next step with the thyme, what is what is the next step? Hopefully next week we'll give it to some testers. So now it's in the state when we can really give it out to people to test it. So we'll gather some feedback from them. So we make sure it's great when we ship the first units. And now we can also move on to actually produce the circuit boards and assemble the first batch. What's still missing is finalizing the enclosure. Who decides how many you're gonna <laughs> try to make the first time? Have you? The thing is that we don't have to make big, big decisions like this because we can be very flexible about the amount of material we order and also about how many circuit boards we order. And because we make a lot of it in-house a lot of the components we have in stock anyway, so that's also why we can actually have that many products as, as much as we have. Mm. So we, j we can just build by demand. My week with Bastel has come to an end and I've gotten to know some really great, dedicated people. One thing that strikes me is how everyone seems to be collectively moving together, adopting each other's ideas and taking absolute joy in doing it. It truly feels like a community where what's most important is the people. Václavs and Andres' brilliance in what they do, their open attitude and their genuine interest in people are all keys to understanding what Bastel truly is. They're moving so fast, yet relaxed, and with a huge window of opportunities wide open. Thanks for having me, Bastel. I hope to see you soon again.